Welcome back to Wanderlusting Lawyer. It's the day before Easter, so it's a little bittersweet because I know this is when probably a lot of people have been planning to finish their Caminos in Santiago to celebrate the holiday. I'm hopeful that we'll see some activity pick up later in the summer and in the fall as more and more people get vaccinated. Um, but certainly next year, hopefully it'll be a big, I'm sure it'll be a big Easter season on the Camino. Um, so I recently posted, I figured out how to use, to do a, a couple things on YouTube. I think these are now available to me since I hit a thousand subscribers, which I'm so excited about. I can do, I've created playlists, but I can also make polls. So I recently did a poll asking, you know, with respect to my different pay, playlists I created, what video people wanted to see next. And I got the most votes for a Camino advice, tips and tricks video. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I guess there's a little overlap with Camino stories, but I'm going to be talking about blisters on the Camino de Santiago. I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while. Uh, I finally kind of got all my thoughts together because I have quite a few. A lot of people have thoughts on blisters. This is uh, a point of pride, I feel like, if people can say they finished their Camino without getting a single blister. Um, so maybe I, I might say some things that are a little controversial today, but I wanted to just give you my experience. Um, and as a reminder, I walked the entire Camino Frances in June and July of 2018. I did it in 34 or 35 days with three rest days. And as you'll, as I'll talk about, I think that that kind of factored into the, the experience I had and the advice I'm gonna to give today. So what is the truth about blisters when hiking the, the Camino de Santiago or how, how do you know if you'll probably get blisters? Well, for me, the truth is that there is no truth. There is no one truth anyway. Everyone's feet are different. Everyone's Camino experience is different. And I think that directly contributes to blisters. How far you walk each day, um, how often you take rest days or simply how, the amount of time you rest each day. All of these factors play a huge part into your individual blister experience. I personally think anyone who says that they did not get a single blister while walking the Camino is either fibbing, <laughs> um, took frequent rest days, which I highly recommend. That's a great reason um, to not have blisters didn't walk more than maybe 20, 23, max 25 kilometers per day, um, or walked maybe 10 or fewer days total, stopped frequently to air out their feet and change their socks. Like a lot of these factors play into it. I think, you know, I would love, if you're someone who's listening and you walked from saint jean pied de port or further away all the way to Santiago and you took three or fewer rest days, and you did the whole Camino in 35 days or fewer and you did not get a single blister, please leave a comment and tell us your secret. Tell us how you did it because uh, I didn't meet anybody that didn't get any blisters and I know that I got some and I learned a lot from those. So, but please leave a comment, give us your secrets. Um, cause that's not going to be my advice today. Cause I did get some blisters, um, which kind of helped me learn a lot about my own feet and also give the advice, hopefully that is helpful to you guys today. Um, so let me set the stage with talking about my routine because I like most people was really, really nervous about bad blisters. Um, I saw that as a way for like a Camino to get just completely ruined and because your feet are what take the most pressure and if you have bad blisters, how could you go on? Um, so my routine after the research that I did was I started every morning with dry feet. I never showered in the morning. I used foot glide. So it looks like a mini, I unfortunately I don't have any, but I can put a link uh, in the description below. It looks like a mini deodorant um, that you glide along your feet. Some people swear by Vaseline. I know there are a couple other options out there. Um, so I just kind of rub that all over the bottom of my feet and in between my toes. Um, then I used a pair of Injinji socks or Injinji, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, they're toe socks. Uh, I'll get to this later why they're missing a few toes. It's relevant to this conversation, but normally there are all five toes. These are great because they do, they do help prevent blisters between the toes because your, 
you know, your skin is not rubbing to create the friction and then the bubble with that's filled with liquid that, you know, can be a blister between the toes. So I highly recommend a first layer of these. They're very thin. Um, so then I would always put on top of them um, a pair of Merino wool socks. This is a darn tough pair, which is a great brand. Um, I had a couple different brands just because I didn't really do a lot of hiking specific experience before the Camino. So I said, well, it's better to have two or three different styles uh, than one style and multiple of those pairs if they don't work great. And these have thicker soles, but they're they're quite breathable. So I always doubled up on socks um, and I do I would definitely do that again on my next Camino. I think it's worth um having an extra pair or two of socks I, I don't think that's an area to skimp on weight especially if you end up needing to cut one of your pairs of socks like i did so i had three pairs of each i had three pairs of these um and three pairs of other socks so you maybe can get away with two of each but i preferred three that wasn't you know that didn't bother me having extra weight there so my experience, did that work? It did work for the first two weeks, 15, no, yeah, about two weeks, the first 14 days. It worked very well all the way through Burgos with one exception. And this is my point about why I think it's so hard to be able to prevent blisters. I had a very deep blister forming underneath my big toe. There was no, there was no bubble, no fluid or anything. It was under the toe. Um, and it just came from, you know, compression walking every day, <laughs> except for two rest days for long periods of time, you know, anywhere between 20 to 30 kilometers. And so that eventually, you know, down the road did form like a very solid piece of skin. Um, but there's nothing I could have done to prevent that unless I just, I think, walked, um, shorter days and took more rest days but even in that first 14 day period i took two rest days and i think that was instrumental in me not getting any other blisters except for the one that i just don't think i could have prevented unless it was an issue with my new balance uh trail runners which i really liked um so i'll never know but the blisters that had that almost took me down actually i got my first one that day leaving burgos hitting the meseta that was the day I got lost. If you saw my last video where I talked about the day I added on an extra like five kilometers or something because I took a wrong turn. Um, and I ended up at the end of the day with this terrible blister forming on the bottom of my right pinky toe. And it, it wasn't like other blisters I'd seen from people, like big blisters on the heel or between the toes. It was on the bottom of the toe from the skin compressing and there was nothing I could do about it. And I walked with that blister and then developed a, a similar one on my, on my pinky toe on my left foot. It wasn't quite as bad, but I walked with those through basically the entirety of the meseta until I got to Astorga and I finally gave myself another rest day. And wouldn't you know, they, they hardened up like that in a day. And I walked without any discomfort for the rest of the Camino. Um, I did get other blisters here and there. And again, I think it's just because I hadn't taken a, I didn't take a rest day for like a, maybe a, maybe a 12 or 13 day period. And I was walking longer days. Um, so, I mean, in terms of taking care of the blisters, I have some advice just on what I used. I know a lot of people say, put on Compede, don't open them and go on your merry way. I frankly, I don't know how that's feasible because if you have blisters on the bottom of your foot, um, as opposed to maybe the side of your foot where you can create some separation on the bottom of your foot, you are pressing onto that every day. The Compede is not going to make it feel any better. So what I did was I had a needle, I would always sterilize it, I'd find, you know, a flame or, or antibacterial soap um, or a, a wipe and I would drain the blister. I would just poke a little hole, I would drain the blister to kind of get, that way there wasn't so much pressure as I was walking. And then I used these, um, I think they're called like corn callus donuts or something like that. But I love them and you can find them with different size holes because these allow for a separate, it basically can take the pressure off of the blisters. So the, the theory is you put the blister and yeah, these are small, you, you know, you, you might want bigger ones, but you put the blister kind of in the middle 
and then uh, this is what the 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 cushion here the padding protects your blister from getting pressed on as you're walking so highly recommend bringing some of these uh, I could only find them in one pharmacy in the entirety of Spain. Um, I think they're elsewhere, but I could only find them in one place. And then the other piece of advice I would recommend, or what I'm going to try next time, is these rubber, or I'm not sure if they're rubber, but these little cushiony toe separators. Because here's the thing, and here is my you know, here's getting back to how you might be able to predict if you'll get blisters. The thing that caused the blisters on my pinky toe, this, my mind was blown. If I had known this before I started, I think I would have been in such better shape. But my toe, my pinky toes look normal when you're looking at my foot, but then when my foot is on the ground, the toe kind of, I can't do it with my finger. The toe kind of turns on its side. So it's like, it's facing the side. I'll, I'll see if I can find a picture. I understand this is um, more common affliction than people think. I mean, the toe is normal. It just kind of leans on its side when it's on the ground. And so from the compression, from walking every day, it creates what's called a pinch blister, as opposed to a blister, like I mentioned before, from, from friction, from two toes rubbing or your heel rubbing against the side of your shoe. So the reason I had cut my socks is because my idea was to, I taped my third and fourth toe together, I guess the two before the pinky, um, and I tried to get them to stay away from my pinky so that it had room, it wasn't getting kind of pressed on by the, you know, by the fourth toe. I wanted to give them some room. So actually, I, I do have a picture of that. I might use it. Maybe you'll have seen it when you click on this video. Maybe that's the picture I'll put up as the cover image. But um, next time, I'm going to try this. After I put on the sock, I'm going to put this around the toe and try to give the pinky toe some separation and some stabilization. But this is the piece of advice that I feel like no one tells you about blisters. Look at your feet. How, when your feet are on the ground, do you have toes that are crossing under each other? Do you have toes that are kind of turning on their side like I do? If your toes are all flat on the ground and nicely separated, you know, you may be in, in luck and have no issues. But if you have any type of kind of oddities in your feet, that's a good sign that blisters may be in your future. So it's not something to be scared of. Um, I If you have the time, make shorter days. You can stop during the day to air out your feet. You can, you know, I didn't do this because I just, I didn't like taking super long breaks, but a lot of people stop, take off their shoes, take off their socks, let their feet breathe, actually change into a new pair of socks for the second part of the day. And, um, you know, maybe that would have been the secret to not having blisters, but given how my feet are, I don't think that it would have been any different for me. So um, this is what I'm gonna try next time. I'm gonna make sure I have a good amount of these. I'm gonna try to build in extra rest days. And um, yeah, like I said, if you <laughs> walk the whole thing, um, didn't get any blisters, please share your, your secret with the rest of us. And I hope you guys, you know, I hope this had some useful information. Let me know if you have any questions and as always, muy muy buen camino and happy Easter.